Good morning and welcome to GM Tips. GM Rick here. Uh, as you can see, I got my Doctor Who many incarnations. I'll show you guys the many incarnations of the Doctor. I love that shirt. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm a Whovian as well as a GM, so it goes with the territory, I guess. Uh, not everybody's a Whovian who GMs, but there are a lot of us out there. So, today I've got a sick munchkin at home, so don't mind hearing her in the background. I'm sitting on the couch because... We're moving in 11 weeks, and guys, you're not going to see a pretty studio for me GM tipping to you. I wish I could, but it's not going to happen with a move. So, once we get to Ohio, I'll show you. We hope to have a third room, and that's going to become my room plus Munchkey's room plus everything. So, it'll be kind of one of those catch-all rooms um, if we can get a house. Be, be keeping us in your thoughts. We need to have a house to rent up there, but we're hoping to. So, GM tips today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the art of um, having action scenes with more than just flashing blades. This comes off of Margaret Weiss. Yes, Mar the Margaret Weiss, who is the author and gamer of the bunch. And it's out of um, Cobalt Press's Guide to Plots and Campaigns. Which, if you haven't gotten that, folks, please get it. it it's um, system neutral, in a sense. But it has a lot of great tips to doing the plots and the campaign ideas. Um, and I always love this. I mean, this is a cool intro that she put. And I'm going to read it a little bit because I think sometimes it does more justice when I read it than paraphrase it. It says, Margaret says, action sequences are fun to write, fun for readers to read, and fun for gamers to play. Action scenes should serve a purpose, however, or they look as though they've been tossed into the novel or game session to liven up an, an otherwise dull tale. In an RPG campaign, players become more involved in an action scene if they know they strive for a greater goal and not just fighting bugbears because the game master needed something to fill the dungeon chamber. And again, it talks to a lot of us that sometimes we put in fillers in our campaigns. We do that simply because we know that a filler works there. And we try to make the campaign as exciting as possible. But after a while, sometimes let's face it, we run out of ideas. And so we throw something in just to keep the players happy and just to keep everything going along. And really, that's not what we should do. We're not about fillers, GMs. Uh, I wish we were all the time about that, make it easier, make our campaigns easier. But literally, we're trying to keep a cohesiveness in a campaign. And so when I do things with my players, I try to keep a major cohesiveness. A great example comes out of uh, the Reign of Winter campaign that I did. I allowed the players to transition in Pathfinder to what's called Mythic. Mythic is an amazing status that makes you almost demigod-like. Um, not quite, but it, it makes you way tougher to harm. And so um, it, it's an amazing thing. So we have... Oh. All right, sorry, I had to respond back with the t sick child to um, Mama GM. And yes, things are much better there, if you guys are wondering. All right, back to the thing, though. I don't want to take away from our session idea here. What do we do to not then do fillers? How do we get scenes to where they make sense? And, and with my campaign, a perfect example, they became mythic, like I talked about. Makes them harder to kill by regular creatures. So now I have to en enter in some mythic things for the players. And when you do the scenes, you have to design them in such a way that it's not always combat, that there's interaction. Um, a, a great example was their dialogue with Vigleev, who helped create, she was the Norn who helped create Baba Yaga. They had conversations with Vigleev. And... You have to make it in such a way that it, it cohesively goes with your campaign. So if you add something in, make sure that it makes sense. Well, with the characters, she provides clues to them to help them to find what they need to free Baba Yaga from the Matrushka dolls. Again, spoiler for those of you who haven't run the campaign or who may play it, um, but a GM can change that a little bit if they want to. I, I, in the GM tips, I'll give you guys spoilers. Just automatically expect that. There's going to be spoilers. So she becomes an add-in scene that provides them with that helpfulness. 
And so that's one of those scene things that we're going to talk about in action scenes. Because, let's face it, our campaigns are action scenes that are ongoing. What's the next scene going to be? And how will it cohesively make sense? Um, great scene. So say you're starting a, a campaign altogether, a brand new campaign. And your players are already chomping at the bit for action. Well, write a scene, of course, that intros their characters. And not just something like, hey, you're at a bar and you see some other people that look like they could be adventurers. Sound familiar, GMs? We use that all the freaking time. And that's not really an action scene intro that is unique. Why not try something with an action scene that's pretty interesting? So you start out. You've got a party. Let's go sci-fi for those of you that love sci-fi campaigns. Or we will even do a steampunk one or maybe even a shadow run one for those of you that like shadow runs. But let's, let's do this in a sci-fi session. So your characters may get to a space station that they're on. And the space station is brand new and, and to them because you don't start them out there, say, all the time. It's a new space station in a different quadrant. You don't have them all together. That's a real good thing to say. You don't always want to start a party together as familiar with each other. So, say one of the party members is a pilot and she is entering onto the station. She enters to see a chase scene where this rapscallion-looking... Um, alien is running down the corridor with several of the armed uh, patrol guards chasing them. In his hand, he has what looks to be a power source that maybe could plug into a ship. And he is running full speed down the corridor way, evading people and, and jumping over obstacles while these um, armed uh, uh, station guards are chasing them, the station security firing weapons, trying not to hit crowd members. What an intro scene, right? What does that scream to the captain? Maybe I should go find out who this individual is. Because this individual is obviously evading the popo. So why don't I just go after them and find out if maybe they could be an asset on my crew in my further adventures? This might be interesting to get to know this individual. Or maybe they could help capture this person and then say... I will keep them on the straight and narrow, sorry, so that they don't continue to do these bad things. That's an intro character scene. Or say they enter the space station and they see this engineer is working on this problem. There's lots of sparks coming out of the panel, but this, um, this strong-looking individual male humanoid is working on the panel while cursing and and banging on it saying come on now get your working i hate this you should be working by now and so you can write this so that the other players do their part in this so lots of things you can do with it but that's an intro scene for the character so let's let's make it unique let's make it interesting let's make it interactive let's make it a little bit more challenging than walking into a cantina or bar and just seeing some cool looking individuals that we think should be a part of our group get where i'm going with this all right so now a steampunk or not a steampunk but let's go shadow run so shadow run intro you have um one of these blade characters so the blade characters being the fighter types is walking down the street. He's on a mission to fulfill uh, a, a uh, mercenary mission to stop this enemy faction from doing what they're trying to do. However, as they're walking along, they see somebody is jacked into this money cred machine. And this, and this um, hacker who's jacked in is going through the system quietly, trying to be sneaky about it. But the blade notices them and notices their adept skill. And, and how they can blend in in public and jack this machine while no one else is noticing. Hmm, maybe this could be somebody that could help me on my mission to thwart the other faction. They're stealthy enough. They can get into the system, work around the system, and nobody knows they're there. Maybe I should go over and have a little conversation with said individual. You see where I'm going with this. You can intro people and bring it together in such a way that makes sense and yet highlights their abilities 
and you can have them do the rolls and everything else. So maybe the jacker screws up and the alarms go off and they're trying to unjack themselves from the system before they get caught. So now maybe the blade provides them a cover to where they can get them out of that situation and away from the coming police security that are going to arrest them for jacking into the machine in the first place. So, so there's a lot you can do when you intro characters. Make it unique and interesting and, and work with your players ahead of time to really write out this sequence so that each one has their own part to play, but you don't let the other ones know that this is going to be the sequence. It makes it fun and exciting. Okay, you can write action scenes that relieve tension. I love these kind of scenes. These scenes, to me, are some of the most fun scenes in an adventure because they provide the laughter, the humor, the jocularity that you wouldn't normally get in a session that's more serious. So, um, Margaret says again, the introduction of humor into a tense action scene can both relieve tension and at the same time heighten it. The classic scene is Indiana Jones is confronted with a saber-wielding villain in the middle of a chase scene, is a good example. We expect the usual epic swashbuckling duel and are not prepared for the lo logical response, and are not prepared for the logical response, which is the hero simply drawing his pistol and shooting the guy. <laughs> you remember that scene? It's like, ha, and then bam, and then he was gone. You're like, wait a minute, where, where's the action there? That was just too obvious. Or... The scene where they're wielding all these weapons, and there comes your heroes. And the heroes turn around and run the other direction as fast as they can, evading the sword-wielding people. Again, the humor of it. Or, or the heroes cut something above, the, or shoot something above the head of the bad guy, and it drops on their head and knocks them out. you got to have a little humor with your action scenes. It doesn't always have to be death, blood, and carnage. It can be a lot of humor. I always love the one where the character comes in, tries to throw the throwing knife, and the throwing knife goes way off in left field. But the result of it still provides a, a humorous moment that takes down the bad guy. So you can do a fumble where the character, oh my gosh, throws the weapon. You're thinking, oh no, we're dead now. But that's not the case. The misthrown weapon hits the rope that has this hoist with, with stuff above the guy who has the sword, and it drops on their head anyways and knocks them cold. So instead of killing the bad guy, you just cold cock him. Again, humorous scenes. And you can have a lot of fun with this. And I love that because then the characters don't always hate the fumble. The fumble then becomes the humor relief that, yes, they had that main action that would have been so freaking cool, but instead they get the humorous action that gets kind of the same result it's just not as pretty and not as powerful, and they don't maybe get as much experience, or maybe they do, because you say, that was a humor point that I had a lot of fun with, so I'll give it to them anyways for the one. So again, these are the type of things. Or the fireball that sets the wagon on fire, but instead <laughs> blows up a few of the warehouse buildings that have valuables in it, so now the players are a scion to the very town that they're trying to protect. A lot of fun in that one, too. Uh, I always have, oh, you know the humor relief in ours, and this is great, in Rain of Winter, and I've got to mention this so my players that they watch this will laugh and laugh and laugh. So, they're facing the Mad Monk Rasputin, okay? Not going to give you the backgrounds, not going to give you the wares, because I don't want to spoil everything. But they're in Rasputin's hideout, and Rasputin's guarded by fields that won't let them easily get through to him. So the players know this, and they're kind of stumped, and they're like, what can we do? Well, one of them says, okay, let's grab one of these stone benches and throw it at him. And they do. And surprisingly, it goes through every protection he has up and hits him in the head with a critical. What an amazingly fun thing to do. And the bad guys confound it. It's like, wait a minute, you weren't supposed to do that. I didn't expect you to do that. And the party gets a bright idea, and they keep throwing benches at him until finally they take him out. What a fun thought that you can take something as easy as that and make it a funny action scene. Because imagine this. Here's the mighty Rasputin flying in the air with all kinds of sizzling fields around him. And there's the player, an Azimar, and with a paladin, picking both of them flying because of their abilities and what they chose, 
both of them picking up a stone bench and hurling it at him and hitting him in the ribs, cracking his ribs. What a humorous moment. It takes the situation that should be this epic, you know, battle of spells and explosions and characters flying and Rasputin taking damage, and it's all summed down to, let's throw a bench at him. <laughs> Humor relief, right? All right. Uh, action scenes that advance the plot. You always have to have something that advance the plot. So you can have an action scene maybe where there's a chase scene. And say it's in a steampunk world where you guys are running after um, a major uh, dirigible that's going to take you out of town. But the dirigible is not the right one. If the characters go on board it, they're going to die. So all of a sudden, as they're running down to the docks, someone calls out to them, wait, wait, wait. Not that dirigible, that one there. That one will give you a better chance to catch up to them and won't put you in danger. So the characters go off towards the dirigible that would have been the one they're going to need through the adventure anyways to get to where they're going. And they instead have to peel off the chase of the person there that's going to the main dirigible. They go to the second one, the lion's heart, and run up to it and ask the captain to get on board and take them to where they need to go and pay them the fees. Now you have an advancement without having the bloodshed. And it's still advancing. Look, they're going to chase this guy. They need the dirigible anyways. Because had they got on the other one, there was a whole crew of baddies that would have cut them down before they even had a chance to get through things. But now they're on the chase scene. So the two dirigibles are chasing each other while they fire things at each other and try not to you know, blow each other up. Pretty cool thoughts, huh? And you can have some fun with it. So you can have some chase scenes. You can have some... Um, maybe it's a dual scene that will take the characters to a door that they otherwise wouldn't have gone in, but that's how the plot will advance because going through that door, they're going to learn some clues from an individual that they wouldn't have met otherwise, but that individual is key to the campaign. You see where I'm going. You can guide people through these amazing scenes into the next part of the story and make it look fluid. As if it was just a surprise situation that, man, had that not happened, we would have never come across this. While you and your mind's going, but I had it planned from the very beginning. Um, you need action scenes that post a challenge. I love the chase scenes, especially. So, the characters are looking for, and this is a medieval campaign, they're looking for a rogue that has been trapping and setting off things that have killed individuals. And now this one's on the loose. So they're searching for him, and all of a sudden, one of the characters happens to make a, uh, a passive perception roll, looks up, and sees this shadow running across the roofs. So now it's a chase scene. Now the characters have to get up on top of the roofs and chase after the baddie, or run along the side on the ground chasing after the baddie, having to go through obstacles, climb fences, and do other things. So they have different challenge ratings that they have to overcome in order to keep up with them and not lose this very individual that they've been searching for. So you take it into a high-speed action sequence where they have 10 obstacles they have to overcome. And they have to make, they get, you know, because it is an action session, as you know, players get an attack action and a move action, or they can do dual move actions. So now you're rolling dual challenges. So to catch up, they have to overcome one challenge and then run to the next challenge and try to overcome to keep up with the very bad guy that's trying to do the same thing, leaping roof to roof. Makes it pretty exciting, huh? Or it could be a sewer scene where they're chasing somebody down through the sewers and they have to avoid obstacles of falling into the sewers or slipping and going into the very water that could wash them away and take them away from the very person they're chasing. So you can have a lot of fun with this high action, high octane chase scene environment. Keep that in mind. Now, you want to have also a tie-in of why are all these things happening in these chase scenes? What is the overall goal? What are they trying to do? And I think that's the thing you got to ask yourself as you put everything together. Why are you taking them through the sequence? Why this action scene? Why this one? Why this choice? Why that choice? you got to have a cohesiveness that makes sense, that the characters may not obviously look at, but after looking at it go, oh, that makes sense to me why we had to do that. That makes sense to me why this happened. And that's really where you're tying things together. you got to look at that. And you can award them experience for going through challenges that aren't battles and combats. 
um, or prestige or boons or whatever you want to give them to reward them through that sequence. But it makes it exciting and fun, and it's not just always combat that they're in. Or the combat is not always the same combat where you fight something to the death. It is a combat where maybe you have to take this person alive because the information they would give you is more important than putting them in the grave. And so you put together a sequence where they have to capture them, and in order to do it, it's much more challenging. As you know, sometimes taking them down and keeping them alive is much more difficult than taking them down and accidentally killing them. Again, look at your ideas when you're doing this. Look at how the cohesiveness is and tie it all together. Have a lot of these type of action sequences. That's important to a campaign. It is always important to take them through something that makes sense and makes a lot of sense doing. I love campaigns where there's not a lot of combat, but there's a lot of solve it, fix it, disable it, disarm it, um, find the clues track the person, uh, capture this thing. That makes it more fun and more exciting for your players and for you. So again, I hope you like this GM tips this week. Much happier GM, Rick, as you can tell, for many good reasons, which someday I'll explain to you guys. But just to say, Anime Puzzle Mama, or Kim and I, are doing quite well and hope to be continuing to do quite well after all the fiasco and ordeal. All right, guys and ladies, and other people, and all you other demi-humans that run around and have fun with it, have a great week, and I hope this provides you a little bit of fun when it comes to action scenes that are unique.